Okay, so sustainability and transparency. In the past, all too often, development projects or projects and business ideas that had a positive impact on society and the environment might be one-off. People would dig a well and then leave. People would install solar panels in a slum in Africa and then leave. Now, people are increasingly starting to understand, particularly social entrepreneurs, that to have a successful business, you have to embed sustainability into the heart of it. Now, what does that mean practically? There's an organization called Charity Water. They're based in New York City, founded by a guy named Scott Harrison. Now, Scott understands that the billion people who lack access to clean water need wells, and they need people to help them in many ways dig the wells. But they also need to understand how to dig the wells themselves. They need to understand how to fix the wells when things break. They need to understand the technical and the engineering requirements of maintaining and keeping up those wells. That's sustainability. You can't just go there, help a group of people with a project, and then leave. There's a project called um, the BOP Protocol, founded by a guy named Stu Hart, who wrote a fantastic book called Capitalism at the Crossroads, that's really looked at how companies and organizations that work around the world can embed sustainability into their projects. And another important thing that they do, other than making sure that there's a lot of training and there's a lot of education associated with it, is really hearing the voice of the community. So you can't go in as a water project or as a social entrepreneur and say, we need to do this, this is what should happen now, next, let's do this. No, you have to be very participatory. You have to sit down, you have to hear them. There's actually a business term called co-creation, where you co-create with people on the ground. You co-create solutions with communities. And often those solutions are the most sustainable. Now, I had a lot of experiences with transparency as an entrepreneur inside the United Nations. I worked as a UN investment associate in an initiative called the Growing Sustainable Business Initiative with the United Nations in Kenya. And it was my job with the United Nations to find businesses and organizations around the country that were doing positive social and environmental things. And then I would invest donor money, this was money was given as donation, donor money, into these businesses, into these organizations to help them do what they do even better. Well, I had a problem with my superior at UN Kenya because I didn't feel like she was being as transparent as we needed to be as an organization. And one of the reasons she wasn't being transparent is because something wasn't working with a project. There was a business, an organization that hadn't met certain standards that we had asked for. And instead of holding back the donor money, we decided, sadly, to give them the money anyway. Now, when I asked her why she did this, she said, well, I was told I had to do this by my boss. And then when I spoke to her boss, her boss said, if we don't give away that money, it was $25,000, then we look like we're not accountable and we look like we don't know how to spend donor money. So they ended up just giving the money away to a project that wasn't really doing anything just to make themselves look better. So that's a huge problem. How do we, as people who care about the world, who care about girls who don't have an education, who care about people who are drinking dirty water, how do we know where to give our money to? Well, there are a few ways, I think. First, I would say you need to use filters. There are hundreds of thousands of charities out there. How do you choose from them? Charities that deal with girls' education and people who are hungry and animals that are being mistreated um, and environmental devastation in the rainforest and our oceans being polluted all over the place. How do you choose? Well, this is what I would do. I would go to filters like donorschoose.org. They have a pretty intense process where they evaluate charities, they evaluate their financial statements, they conduct interviews, and it's a pretty deep process um, of, value, of evaluation that they conduct around the world. There's another one called Charity Navigator that I believe gives charities one to four stars or one to five stars in terms of rating their effectiveness, again, across a wide range of standards. What percentage of the money are you actually using on projects? What percentage of the money that donors give is being used on administration costs. And that's a big problem, I think. When you give money to a cause 
and 75% happens to be sucked up in salary and building maintenance and paper and computer costs. You want your money really going to where the impact and to where the need is felt the most. Another way I would use a filter is go to great publications. There's one called Good at Good.is. It's a magazine, Good Magazine. And they list um, every single day five people, projects, and organizations that are good, that are world changers. And that's another filter. These people from Good Magazine also have a pretty intensive evaluation process. And they give you yet another filter to pick the charities, to pick the people and organizations that are really doing fresh and innovative stuff, stuff where your money is actually going to be the most impactful. Last place, every single year, lots of organizations and companies come to New York City for something called the Clinton Global Initiative. And as a requirement for being at that initiative, they have to commit to do something. You cannot come to the CGI, the Clinton Global Initiative, and not do anything. So just by virtue of being there, by being invited there, and by virtue of them being proactive, it's yet another pretty good filter to weed through all these hundreds of thousands of charities and pick one or a few where you can put your money 